Pulsed arc welding is a further development of gas metal arc welding, otherwise known as MIG-MAG welding. This method got its commercial breakthrough in the 80s. Developments in power electronics and microcomputers had made possible greater control of the welding process. There isn't so much difference between conventional MIG-MAG equipment and that of pulse dark welding. In principle, an ordinary MIG-MAG power source with a built-in function for pulsing the current is used for pulse dark welding. Pulsed arc is primarily used for welding aluminium and stainless steel in thinner dimensions. Pulsed arc is also advantageous for welding aluminium in thicker dimensions. Pulsed arc is also used for the welding of non-alloy and low-alloy steels. Pulsed arc welding can be carried out both with solid wire and cord wire. Let's have a look first at what happens in the arc during conventional MIG-MAG welding. The definition of short arc or spray arc welding really depends on how the melted material is transferred from the electrode to the workpiece. In the short arc, the molten material is transferred in large drops, which momentarily short-circuit the arc. These short circuits make the arc unstable, with the risk of spatter occurring during welding. Although productivity isn't very high with this method, the low heat input makes it very suitable for welding thin plate and for positional welding. The spray arc functions at a decidedly higher current and voltage. The molten material is sprayed with small and very finely distributed drops, which don't short-circuit the arc. One drawback is the high heat input, which is why the spray arc can only be used in thicker materials, and then mainly in a horizontal position. One advantage is the high level of productivity, which is useful for welding multi-pass beads in thicker workpieces. It would be a good thing if you could combine the advantages of the short arc with those of the spray arc. An adjustment of the current and voltage where we end up with something between a spray arc and a short arc results in the so-called mixed arc. A mixed arc is unstable and produces a lot of spatter. The solution to the problem is pulsed arc welding. In other words, an artificial spray arc. Pulsed arc welding is achieved by pulsing the welding current between a low and a high level, 30 to 300 times per second. This enables such control of the welding process that only one drop of molten filler material is pinched off per pulse. During the pause, the background current is kept at the appropriate level, keeping the arc burning without any transportation of material from the electrode. The only thing that happens is that the wire and the workpiece are preheated to a certain extent. During the pulse current, the end of the filler wire melts and a droplet is transferred to the workpiece. This happens without the arc being short-circuited. The result is a steady and stable arc without spatter. This is very important in robot welding, for example, when you have the requirements of high productivity and want to avoid having the extra cost of grinding. Furthermore, there is less spatter attaching to the equipment, which in turn means lower maintenance costs. Additionally, due to the higher heat input, the risk of lack of fusion is less compared with short arc welding. 
The mean current for pulsed arc welding is kept at a relatively low level, as the background current level is low. The high pulse current enables the melting of thicker wire than is possible with conventional MIG-MAG welding. The price of thicker wire is less per kilo, which also means lower wire costs. Thicker wire also ensures proper feeding of the wire when welding with softer filler material such as aluminium. Pulsed arc welding is primarily used for welding thinner dimensions of aluminium and stainless steel. With pulsed arc welding, you have very good control of the heat in the arc, and at the same time, the stable arc ensures spatter-free welding. There are even more advantages to pulsed arc welding, such as when welding thick aluminium plate, as there will be less danger of pores in the weld. Housing sections for offshore rigs are manufactured at Leirvik on the west coast of Norway. They are made entirely of aluminium, and there are heavy requirements on constructional strength. The total welding time has been estimated to be over 2,000 hours, and all welding has to be carried out with the pulsed arc welding method. After extensive tests, pulsed arc has proved to be the method which provides far better results than any other welding method. Pulsed arc welding has completely eliminated pores in welds. The reliability of pulsed arc welding has made it possible to automate welding in some areas of production. 1.2 and 1.6 mm salt resistant aluminium wire is used. Long eye girders can be welded from two directions at the same time. Pulsed arc welding has provided a 30% reduction in welding time. That's quite a savings, considering a total welding time of 2,000 hours on the 40-ton housing section. This crude oil preheater is being manufactured at the Lingbo workshop in Sandviken in Sweden. It has to work under very high pressure, and the welds must be entirely void of pores. If you use the pulsed arc, you get a high-quality weld without pores and spatter. So-called synergic machines with a built-in function for current pulsing are used for pulsed arc welding. And they can, of course, be used for normal MIG-MAG welding as well. The word synergic means that the welding machine automatically selects a string of parameters according to certain given values. So it's very easy to use a synergic machine. You just define the type of filler material, wire dimensions and shielding gas, as well as setting the wire feed rate. This information enables the machine to select the correct arc voltage and pulsing parameters, such as pulse amplitude and frequency. These powerful bursts of pulse current can cause excessive wear on the contact tip. So it's a good idea to check the tip regularly and see that the gas can flow through it freely. Unhealthy ozone gas is created during pulse arc welding, just as it is with MIG-MAG welding. Therefore, you should use some type of mycin as a shielding gas whenever possible. Mycin is Aga's name for all the shielding gases which have been given a small additive of nitric oxide to reduce the ozone emission. When you're pulse arc welding with non-alloy or low-alloy steels, you can use argon with between 2 and 20% carbon dioxide. For reliable, trouble-free welding, we recommend a carbon dioxide level below 15%. For pulsed arc welding of stainless steel, the same shielding gases are used as with conventional MIG welding. This means that they contain argon or argon-helium mixtures with a maximum of 2% oxidizing additive of oxygen or carbon dioxide. It's advisable to use mycin or argon for the pulsed arc welding of aluminium. You can also use a mixture of argon and helium. So you can see there are a lot of advantages to pulsed arc welding. 
Let's summarize. Pulsed arc welding provides a steady and stable arc, even when welding in the mixed arc working range. You also get less spatter than with short arc or mixed arc welding. Compared with short arc welding, there is less risk of lack of fusion because of the increased heat input. Yet, at the same time, there is less heat input than with the conventional spray arc. This means that you can weld both thin plate and in all positions with pulsed arc welding. There is also less danger of pores than with spray arc welding. And furthermore, you can use thicker wire, which means lower costs per kilo, and steadier wire feed for specific applications. You can use the same wire diameter both for root beads and filler beads.